Blessing soul travelers, I hope you are enjoying your new moon in Cancer energies today. It is Wednesday, but this message will apply whenever you see it. We are, however, going to be looking at the Witch's Wisdom Oracle cards to see what is going on with the energy of whoever will be viewing this video. All right, we'll also be checking in with the tarot, specifically the psychic tarot and the light seers tarot today. And I've pulled out my moonology card so we can get some more clarification even further from spirit to see what is going on and what may be the advice moving forward today for our reading. And then at the end of all of that, I will pull a romance angels card, the infamous Doreen Virtue romance angels cards. Yes. All right, guys. So how are you doing? If you haven't already, do check out your weekly reading that is was done yesterday, which was Tuesday when the new moon took effect. Uh, the water, the, sorry, the air and fire signs I did before the new moon went into effect. And then the fire, um, or sorry, water and earth I did uh, after that time frame. So very powerful messages that came out. Do check that out for sure. Blessings to you and also blessings to the witch's wisdom as well as the angels, ancestors, way showers, and guides. Do you bring forth what we need to know this day, we pray. Take a couple of nice slow deep breaths and relax. Okay, guys, let's see what's going on today. I'm going to get a little bit more clarification from the books for these cards today so we can really be clear about what's going on for us here, okay? Because I feel like a lot of us are going through some major, major changes within ourselves or with other people. Things being cut out, you know, I just, uh, that's what I've been seeing anyway. A lot of it probably is around relationship too. A lot of Cards just fly out right then. We'll look at what they were. Hearth and homecoming flew on the ground. We're going to put back high priestess or high priest and responsibility also came out. And Beltane and fertility. So those were the three that just kind of flew out. So there may be some energies, like I said, around relationships. And specifically, like, I'm feeling a lot like uh, relationships that may have uh, recently happened or recently occurred. So I feel like it may have started hot and heavy, but maybe now going into some fiery situations, if you will. Let's see what this is. Oof. Putting the chill on things with the Watchtower of the North Winter. Every time I see this card, I always think of your true north and, you know, hibernating. Really spending that time, if you will, like uh, focused on what is your purpose and your true north you know taking time away from other people and other things pulling yourself back you know so you're not um so focused on other things if you will so you can get yourself perhaps with a good foundation you know this season of your life even though it's summer um, in some parts of the world it is winter so maybe you're a little bit different in your uh what would they call that? Your seasons. Your seasons are a little reversed, just like a, a baby's sleep schedule can be off and they can be up at night and sleep during the day. Interesting. All right. So the witch's wisdom says calling upon the guardians and gatekeepers of the north. The season of winter brings you its gifts steeped in magic and mystery as it works in conjunction with the element of earth oh yeah so we were talking about that about getting grounded perhaps we're building that new foundation like i said and getting our pentacles in order by visiting the watchtowers of the north you're being called to go deep within to rest and recharge while earth nurtures and restores you so definitely be like that bear and you know restore your energy and be ready to go back out after the winter refreshed and renewed so this may be that time where you need to pull back and do some resting you know what i mean you've been going a little hard perhaps the north will assist you in all aspects of home life security and the nurturing that you require 
connect with the crone aspect of the triple goddess. So that's that wisdom, you know, the wise old aspect, you know, just like our uh, grandmothers and grandfathers, you know, that wisdom that they hold. So we're tapping into that wisdom today of the triple goddess as you journey with the god in elder form inwards and face that which you have ignored for too long allow winter to freeze out any unwanted behavior situations or addictions you have been holding on to stripping you bare within the dark chambers of winter's tomb Ooh. so this is a time to really like freeze out and let go release totally and maybe, you know, pulling ourselves back and, and maybe even uh, going somewhere where we don't have access to people, places, or things will help us, you know, to make that change that we need to. The color black represents the element of earth and should be used in accordance with your magical workings at the time of midnight. Winter shares its wisdom in association with the card that flanks this one. So we didn't pull another card. Um, but what I will say about this is when I saw it talking about the element of black, I did think of a black candle, you know, to burn away any negative, dense, dark energies, you know, helping us to be able to recharge and take in more of that light energy to recharge our energies, right? All right, so the Witch's Foresight says, you are going through a dark night of the soul, surrender and release. And just like with a death, you know, lighting candles is a way of drawing negative spirits away from you and into that candlelight. So do light candles around you, even if they're white ones or whatever you may have. But I thought of black and especially if you light it at uh, dusk and maybe midnight in this case is when you need to light it uh, just to help to, you know, draw away any of those demons you know or things that may be trying to antagonize you is what i was hearing especially at night and if you can't sleep is what i was hearing you are metamorphosing rest and rejuvenate so yeah pull away from anything that's trying to pull on your energy as much as possible right now and do take some time away literally away if you can like a small vacation if you can all right, just to recharge a little bit. The ancestors are connecting with you. Invoke your dark side with harm to none. All right, so there's nothing wrong with tapping into our dark side. We just have to know who we are and how to, you know, put those measures in place where we don't allow that dark to uh, take over in ways that are going to be uh, detrimental if you will to us all right there is a way to use both to help us and support us the um the what do they call that uh necessary evil yes all right sometimes there's that watchtowers of the north revealed hail and welcome guardians of the north star yeah we were talking about that this is a time of the ancestors the power of earth connects us to our wisdom and understanding of the old ways. Yeah, we talked about that too with our ancestors, right? Tapping into the old ways of doing things, that crone energy, the elder, and really going in with that understanding of our healing process. So, you know, uh, imagine your grandmother, or grandfather, you know, scolding you or, or, or you know, um, disciplining you if you will and how that would feel and you you definitely want to make them proud right so this is a making yourself proud of yourself for being grown up and doing what needs to be done right the goddess integrates and becomes the aspect of crone as the god embraces the wisdom of the elder pentacle protects this quarter so your Incantation today says, winter is hard, but you will survive as crone strips you while, you while still alive. This season's magic is laid bare, new wisdoms found within to share. This magic is worked with harm to none, so mote it be, there it is done. Yes, stripped bare. I remember a story that uh, a great entrepreneur, Ty Lopez, um, has spoken of and 
does a lot of times, but the Sioux Indians, right, back in the day when there was the settlers and things of that nature, and this would have been up in the North Dakota here, it was obviously very cold. Even today, it's very cold, right? But they would cut holes in the ice and they would dip their babies in that icy, freezing water. And, you know, the settler women, um, were horrified by this and they would ask why are you doing that and they said it was to teach their babies to be brave right so it's like that shock therapy if you will too if you think about it jumping in icy water and how much that stimulates the nervous system and the brain um, and almost like biting a lemon and things of that nature too right to rewire you and get you back on track, help you to get back into focus, you know, so this is kind of like a shock to the system, if you will, to help you to get back on track is really what this is like today. All right, let's see what is going on with this energy, shall we? Very powerful energy, as I told you. We're removing those obstacles and blocks, or at least this is what we are needing to do, all right? So whatever has been blocking us, keeping us from standing our ground, right? Doing what we need to do to stand in our power, to face anything that we need to, demons, you know, and good alike. Because in our foundation, things haven't been perhaps growing the way that we've been wanting them to. And this would have a lot to do with, you know, standing our ground. In the past, yeah, our foundation was a bit off, it seems like. So this definitely is requiring us to get back on track. Not choosing wisely, you know, ch decisions that we're making and things of that nature. Really needing to sit with ourselves like this guy is doing here and really look at all of those directions and which way is going to be the best. Um, making, you know, like the necessary evil, it's like uh, the best choice out of, you know, how do they say that? The, the lesser of the two evils, perhaps. And then we have spiritual union coming into play here. So where you are not growing, perhaps spirit is saying there is a decision that needs to be made, something that you need to see with this light energy coming forth that there are no obstacles like the matrix there is no spoon right <laughs> victory and success yes if you can just understand that you know much of what we experience is merely an illusion and if you can just stand your ground and know what's right don't lose heart don't lose faith you know shock yourself back into remembering what's going on here and just staying on track you know what i mean all right, so let's clarify with the lights in this tarot. Do hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and I truly appreciate all your support. Stand your ground. What is this energy telling us? We have the Queen of Wands in reverse. Wow. This is some tough energy to stand up for. Um, if you're not using your energy wisely, especially if you're somebody who was trying to uh, was getting your energy by, you know, being with somebody, maybe that's the best way to put it, like you felt like your worth and your value was tied up in someone else, this is a time for you to break away from that energy of, you know, connecting with other people at this time. Pull yourself away and go and be by yourself, all right? because you haven't been putting the work in and you know it, there's too many distractions, you know, too many people trying to distract you if nothing else, even though you're doing as good of a job as you can maybe to hold your ground. All right, moving forward. This is going to help you to take that leap of faith that you need to into that pool of water to allow yourself to splash and flow and really just feel good about this new step you're taking forward without having other people distracting you and bothering you. Ooh, that conch show, right? So there's something that you'll be able to hear when you get alone is what spirit is saying. You'll be able to tap back in to that Empress energy and start getting everything flowing the right way for you again. All right. So you can avert these towers. This tower in reverse is good to see, but we don't even want to, you know, have any potential towers. We want to know that, like when we come up against these choices, we can shock ourselves back into reality and say, wait a minute. 
This is not just about having fun. You know, we have to be serious about our life. Base chakra in reverse. We have the star in reverse. Yeah, some healing that definitely needed to take place, which is why we needed to pull away from whatever we were doing or we need to, you know, if you haven't already, because right now our choices are definitely not serving us very well. We're wanting happiness, right? But we need to do this healing first to be able to bring that in. Yes, we can tap into those good feeling energies, but who are the right people to create that with? And maybe that's been the problem is we're not choosing, you know, who we need to choose maybe, which is ourselves and focusing on ourselves, right? But spiritual union, maybe it's not with anybody else. Maybe it's just with yourself and with God at this time. Yeah. Take away all of that worry. Spirit will help you to do that if you can get alone and really see what's going on here. Maybe there's just too many people, once again, pulling on your energy, right? So again, we have this chariot in reverse for the spiritual union, Knight of Pentacles. So it feels like it's time right now, once again, to pull away not move forward with this situation at this time and allow yourself to see if this is the right way moving forward. Do you want to continue to make plans with this person? Let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Yeah, because this is going to help you to gain that stability that you've been looking for, that you've been needing so much. All right, so you need to really pull away King of Wands energy in reverse and you've got Queen of Wands energy in reverse here. Absolutely. I feel like you both have a lot coming at you, a lot of competition, a lot of people wanting to talk to you, maybe even just this person wanting to talk to you about making plans moving forward. But in any case, this is not the time to be entertaining anyone is what I see. All right. So hit the like button if that's you today. Let's check our Moonology cards, see what's going on with this further. What is the advice moving forward for this Watchtower of the North situation? shocking ourselves you know it's almost like um, reminding ourselves keeping ourselves on track you know and it's hard to do sometimes the answers you need are coming is what we get from this all right this is the full moon in gemini it's not gemini energy it is cancer energy but we're going to look into the moonology cards book and see what is going on here <laughs> it's funny i pull, turned right to it all right i'm going to read this card to you today so we can get a little bit more energy around this again i feel like it could be you know with this being the twins this could be with the spiritual union again not divine timing with the movement forward in reverse with this chariot in reverse and he looks like he's moving a different direction as far as the plans that are being made. So somebody here, or maybe both people, just really weren't committed to the relationship the way that they needed to be. And maybe things could, you know, come back together. But I feel like the answers that you need are going to be coming to help you to be as clear as possible about the decision you're making or maybe have made. The card is a reminder that it is important to speak your truth, but remember that your words have consequences and impact your listener right now. You need to guard against indiscretion. The answers you need may well come soon. The issues you are facing will be one or a few conversations away from being resolved. So one or a few conversations away from being resolved. If you're inquiring about a love situation, a little flirting may be called for. If you're in the middle of an argument, this card comes to you as a reminder of the old, very non-Gemini message. Least said, soonest mended. It is good to talk, but be careful you aren't causing yourself any issues with your words. So do be careful, you know, you might be recorded or something is kind of what I was um, seeing with that or somebody may be trying to set you up to get upset kind of thing. Ooh, they talk about Florence Scovel Shen. I love her. I'll put a link in the uh, description box. All right. Words have enormous power. As metaphysician Florence Scovel Shen 
who lived from 1871 to 1940 put it, your word is your wand. And you can look that up on YouTube. Your word is your wand. It is a, a teaching of hers, uh, a book, I believe, but you can listen to it for free on YouTube. I will again, look, try to remember to link that, but Florence Scovel Shin, your word is your wand. You create magic and your own reality every time you express yourself. So be careful what you're saying, all right? Really, really careful. Okay, attune to the moon. Have an important conversation, but stay calm is what this card says. Additional meanings say, do not be superficial. Someone is trying to flirt with you. Have you noticed? You need to laugh off this situation and just move on, mm, right? laugh off the situation and move on, make plans in another direction. Yeah, because maybe you knew from the beginning that you had a feeling that this person wasn't really committed to begin with. And maybe you really weren't either, to be honest, right? So maybe it's time to just be honest and move on instead of getting upset about the situation, right? We understand our value and our worth, so it's okay. We just need to make the right decision for ourselves. All right, so job applications have good prospects. The teaching says talk, talk, and more talk. As the emotional full moon moves into the communicative sign of Gemini, so maybe around the full moon is when this will all wrap up, since it did say one or a couple of conversations, and currently we are in the new moon in Cancer energy. It is easy to say too much so mind how you go if you pull this card. This card can also indicate an enjoyable social event since the full moon in Gemini is a great time for socializing. This card is also augurs well with any study you're either taking or considering. Beautiful. So overall, I like the energy of this card. So you're going to work things out. You're going to figure out exactly what's been going on in this situation is what I'm seeing. Let's put a lover's card to wrap it all up and see what the advice is from our today. So yeah, talk about it. Get it out. Go to yourself. Really evaluate the situation. I feel like this person though could be still trying to come at you with a lot of passion and this is not the time for that. Not with this Watchtower of the North Energy card. This is a time to put those passions a little bit more on ice or cool down at the moment. All right. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Let's see what this card has to say in our book a little bit further for passion. All right, so our card for passion today says, your prayers for great love have been heard and answered and it all begins with you. Well, maybe this is that new person that sparked the interest. Uh, you have the power to revive passion in your life. In fact, no one can bring it to you but you. This card guides you to seek that which brings you great joy, such as a hobby, cause, or special activity. See, because we don't need a person necessarily to bring us happiness and passion. This is an angel reviving that passion within us, right? So this is us feeling good, feeling happy because we should feel happy ourselves. We should not be the source of anyone's happiness or look to someone else to be our source of happiness. So hobbies, being involved in, you know, new ways of, you know, doing your job or uh, de determining where you want to take your next vacation or move, whatever, you know, those are the things that keep our life exciting. All right. So Anything that stirs your heart with joy will help passion bubble forth and positively flow into your romantic life, if that's the case. Otherwise, what usually ends up happening is you bring somebody along because you're just in that happy high vibe, and then you bring somebody along that's in that happy high vibe too. The romance angels say that having a passion for life itself is a prerequisite, sorry, a requisite foundation for feeling passion in your love life. This means enjoying this moment completely. And when you do so with your partner, you inspire him or her to romantically participate with you. Yeah, they get inspired, right? Just like you do when you see somebody who's happy and just good with themselves, good in life. They don't need anybody to make them happy, right? This is exactly what we want to inspire to as well. 
If you are presently single, you can definitely enjoy passion in your activities and hobbies. And who knows, such pursuits may provide an opportunity to meet a wonderful partner who shares these passions. Yeah, I love that. So this is taking that time away and perhaps focusing on yourself, focusing on a hobby, focusing on a project or whatever the case may be and getting your passions ignited again for life through what you are creating. Wow, wonderful. I love this. Blessings for your week ahead for this day. Do hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you soon for another reading. Bye for now.